Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today we'll be talking remotely with Dr. Walter Short. Dr. Short is a hand surgeon who practices hand surgery at the SOS Hand and Wrist Surgery Center at the Syracuse Orthopedic Specialist in Syracuse, New York. Dr. Short is a recognized leader in the field of orthopedic hand surgery, publishing over 200 articles and scholarly presentations and receiving numerous research grants from the federal government while serving as a professor at Upstate Medical University. He's also recognized for premier patient care, having received a National Patient's Choice Award for three consecutive years and a five-star rating by Health Grades. Dr. Short attended medical school at Upstate Medical University, followed by a general surgery internship at the University of Connecticut and a surgical orthopedic residency at Upstate Medical University. Dr. Short continued his education with a hand fellowship at Yale University and the University of Connecticut. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Short. Thank you for having me today. Well, Dr. Short, today what I thought we would talk about is a, is a condition called a scaphoid or navicular nonunion. And this is a problem that occurs fairly commonly in the wrist after a fracture of the scaphoid or sometimes called a navicular bone. So let's start by having you tell the patients uh, a little bit about what, what this bone does, where it's located, and, and how uh, we come to have a, a non-union uh, of a scaphoid fracture. Uh, the scaphoid or the navicular is, a, uh, is probably the most important bone in the wrist. The wrist itself is made up of uh, eight little bones that are all irregularly shaped and uh, they act like little ball bearings which uh, allow the wrist to move in a variety of different directions. The scaphoid uh, sort of looks like a, a cashew and, and uh, the scaphoid is the most commonly broken bone in the wrist and uh, approximately uh, 10 or 15 percent of uh, scaphoid fractures go on to uh, 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 not heal or what they call become a non-union. The reason for that is that the blood supply to this particular bone is different than most bones. So all of the blood supply comes in from one end of the bone and if the bone is broken in two, uh, the blood uh, inside the bone can't get to the fractured part of the bone, and therefore it uh, delays the healing of this bone. You know, I think we probably ought to point out as well, we, we talked earlier about uh, the, the concept of a wrist sprain in one of our earlier discussions. And this is one of those bones that I think sometimes is missed in, in, initially, or, or a fracture of this bone is missed initially, and you may go to the emergency room with, with a fall on an outstretched hand, get an x-ray, and the ER doctor or the radiologist read that initially as, as no fracture. Um, and I think that one of the causes of a non-union that we probably ought to point out is people not recognizing that they actually have a fracture of this bone and it not being treated initially. Uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, uh, a large part, uh, a large portion of people that go to the emergency room that fall on their hand or they're involved in a sporting activity and fall on their hand. Uh, the, this bone is uh, so irregularly shaped, it's uh, sometimes very difficult to see uh, uh, if it's fractured. Uh, so what uh, sh uh, should happen uh, if the patient continues to have pain in the wrist they should uh, um, go back to the emergency room for follow-up or, or they should go to an orthopedic surgeon or a hand surgeon uh, to get uh, more x-rays or specialized views to see if they do have a fracture. The problem with uh, this fracture is that if it doesn't uh, heal or they continue to ignore it, uh, uh, five to ten years down the road, the vast majority of people that have a uh, non-union of this scaphoid or this bone uh, develop arthritis. And how does a person know if they, if they have a non-union? I mean, is there any way that they should be suspicious other than just having pain that persists that perhaps they have a, a non-union of the, of the navicular or scaphoid? Uh, they would know that because uh, if, the, uh, if they're athletic, uh, they can't do the athletic activities that they did before, uh, things like push-ups, uh, throwing a ball, uh, uh, catching a ball. 
is more painful than usual. The pain persists. Uh, a sprain, uh, usually after a few days or a week or so, will uh, eventually go away. If uh, they have a fracture, uh, the pain will persist. And if they have a fracture and it's not treated, uh, then it becomes more, more and more difficult to get it to heal. Now, it, when, when that patient presents to you, let's say they've, they've had this wrist injury six months uh, beforehand and, and perhaps they, they, they either did not have treatment or perhaps the, the treatment was commenced uh, immediately, but the, the, the fracture just failed to heal. How are you going to approach that in terms of evaluation? How do you start with that patient trying to figure out what's the best treatment for them? Uh, the the uh, best uh, uh, start is to uh, get specialized uh, uh, studies, uh, and that would either be a uh, computerized uh, x-ray or a CT scan, possibly an MRI may be done, because the key part of treatment when it hasn't been treated for six months is to see if uh, both of the pieces of bone which are broken have a blood supply. If they don't have a blood supply, then uh, uh, they need to be treated in a certain fashion. If, if, the, if both pieces of bone are, have a blood supply, uh, there's a, a different way of treating it. So if you get an MRI, uh, and one of the pieces of bone, uh, one of the parts of the bone which has been fractured, doesn't have a blood supply, then it has to be treated with uh, specialized uh, surgical techniques to uh, implant a blood supply into that bone which has no blood flow in order to uh, stimulate it to heal. It also needs to be, uh, the two pieces of bone have to be connected together with uh, specialized screws to hold it in a rigid position while uh, it heals and while that piece of bone gets a new blood supply. Now, I think we ought to probably distinguish for patients because th these are two very different situations I think that you've just described. One with the lack of the blood supply in, in one, one or both pieces of the bone. Normally I think it's, it's usually just one of the pieces. But I think we ought to really stress to patients how, how how difficult a situation that is. Um, can you describe a little bit more about what you're worried about as a hand surgeon when you see this condition where the patient has no blood supply to one of these fragments or what we might term avascular necrosis of, of a piece of that bone? Um, how do you approach that differently? Typically, the, the patient uh that has avascular necrosis or uh, loss of blood supply to this fragment of bone, and uh, most uh, and, and always it is the uh, part of the bone uh, which is uh, closest to the forearm, uh, not the part of the bone which is closest to the fingers. And if this bone, if this part of the scaphoid doesn't have a blood supply. Uh, what happens is that the bone uh, starts to get soft, uh, it loses its contour, uh, it starts to fragment apart, and if that's the case, uh, uh, it is extremely difficult to get it to heal, and even if you can get it to heal, the uh, shape of the bone is abnormal, which uh, will eventually lead to arthritis. So it's important to determine if that piece of bone has a blood supply, and that is done uh, uh, either with an MRI and uh, at the time of surgery, you can tell if there is bleeding in that bone, because if it isn't bleeding, uh, the surgeon needs to do uh, something to uh, restore the blood flow to that bone, and that's uh, with a specialized surgical procedure. Most of the time, these people are very young, and uh, if you can't get it to heal, uh, they are sort of doomed to develop arthritis at a later date. Well, it sounds like this is probably the worst case scenario where you have avascular necrosis, you have a, a non-union, and you're having to do some fairly specialized surgery in terms of trying to get this to heal and restore whatever you can salvage from this situation. Let's talk a little bit about the situation where 
both pieces of bone do have a blood supply, and what you have is, is in some ways a simpler situation where you have a fracture that's not healed, uh, perhaps it's six months down the road. What are our options there? If it's six months and it has not healed, it uh, is uh, very unlikely to heal, especially if it hasn't been treated. Uh, uh, in many cases, uh, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, athletes come uh, to the office, uh, they got injured in the uh, beginning part of the season, typically it's football, uh, they're afraid to tell anybody that they injured their wrist uh, for fear that they won't be able to uh, uh, finish out the season, so they sort of mask their symptoms and at the end of the season they come and uh, x-rays and specialized uh, studies show that they have a non-union of this uh, scaphoid. If both of the pieces are uh, have a blood supply, uh, in many cases the bone is not in the uh, normal uh, shape or normal position. Uh, since a bone is uh, shaped sort of like a kidney bean or a cashew, what happens is that the bone continues to bend and uh, becomes uh, what is termed a humpback deformity, which is an accentuated shape of the bone. In that case, you have to uh, surgically uh, restore the normal uh, shape of the bone. Uh, and uh, when you do that, there's always a gap in the bone, so you have to fill that in with bone that you obtain from a different part of the wrist or the hip, and you have to stabilize the bone, the scaphoid, with a screw that uh, maintains uh, its normal or what they term anatomic position. Because if it doesn't, it'll just drift back into the shape it was uh, six months uh, after it fractured and there was no treatment. So it's important to restore the position and uh, normal uh, contour of the bone. Is there any situation where you would consider uh, treating a non-union that has not healed and simply putting the patient in a cast, treating them non-surgically? Uh, if they uh, came uh, and, uh, and if they came right away and uh, had a diagnosis of a fractured scaphoid, and the scaphoid was in its normal uh, shape and normal position, then I would treat uh, that person in a cast. Uh, if they came uh, six months uh, later and it hadn't healed, uh, most of the uh, studies that have been done show that it will not heal in a cast and that it needs to be surgically fixed. So if I understand you correctly, what you're suggesting is that if you get one of these fractures relatively soon after the injury, and maybe it's not been treated or maybe it has been treated uh, inappropriately, for example, with a brace or something like that, then you might go ahead and try to heal that fracture with a cast. How long would you attempt cast treatment in that case before you abandon cast treatment and said this needs an operation? If you treat it in a cast for six, eight, uh, ten weeks and you get x-rays and the x-rays show that there's been no healing at all, uh, that is an indication to uh, abandon uh, cast treatment and treat it surgically. Uh, if you uh, init if, uh, initially you have a uh, fractured scaphoid, which is in the correct position, and you treat it in a cast, and later on you see that uh, the fracture fragments have uh, shifted in position, that's an indication to treat it surgically. Uh, and if you see uh, uh, x-rays after it's been in a cast, which show that there may be some signs that the bone is losing its blood supply, then it's important to determine if it has a blood supply and, and treat it appropriately. Now, what's the current thinking in terms of, of doing an operation to put a screw in percutaneously, for example? so that you don't actually make an incision, you don't actually open up the, the, the wrist and look at the scaphoid, but, but you, you put a wire down through using a fluoroscope and then put a screw across to stabilize it. Is that currently done for any of these fractures or are, are we now opening most of these and trying to, to fix them more definitively by looking at the fracture and putting the hardware in and the bone graft if necessary under direct vision? 
if uh, the indications to do uh, surgery uh, percutaneously, which means uh, either no incision or a very small incision, is if the uh, scaphoid fracture is not grossly displaced uh, and uh, uh, it needs only a little bone graft or no bone graft. Uh, some non-unions uh, are, uh, the fracture has just not healed, but it has maintained its normal shape. And if that's the case, then all you need to do is uh, put a screw across the fracture site, and the screw not only maintains the normal shape of the bone, but as you put the screw in, the two pieces of bone squeeze together or compress, which uh, stimulates healing to occur. So fra fractures or non-unions which have not been displaced or don't have a gap between the two ends of the bone are most uh, uh, commonly treated uh, in this percutaneous manner. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the more specialized surgery that you alluded to earlier when you've got the situation that not only do you have a, a non-union, but you also have the avascular necrosis or the lack of blood supply into that proximal pole or that, that uh, piece of the bone that's near the forearm. Um, can you describe the, the nature of that surgery, what you're trying to do to increase the blood supply to that fragment? Uh, the, uh, the problem is that this bone has no blood supply and uh, the reason, there's two reasons why it doesn't have, why it's lost its blood supply. One, because of the fracture and when the, when the bone is broken, uh, the, bl the blood flow inside the bone uh, has been disrupted because now that one bone is now two bones. And, and the second reason is that this bone has a lot of cartilage covering it. Probably almost 80% of this bone is cartilage or a, a covering to allow the bone to glide. And if there's cartilage, there's no areas where uh, blood vessel can enter the bone to uh, allow it to heal. So in these fractures where uh, there is no uh, blood supply or they've lost the blood supply, uh, there are surgical techniques where uh, using a microscope we can find other blood vessels which uh, instead of going into the scaphoid, they go into the radius of one of the forearm bones, uh, and by uh, taking a piece of bone and the blood supply of the radius, we plug that into the scaphoid. So now instead of uh, uh, supplying uh, blood uh, to the radius, which it originally did, now it supplies blood uh, to the scaphoid. The radius has multiple um, blood vessels that go into it, so the radius is, is not gonna miss one out of multiple blood vessels that enter it, whereas the scaphoid uh, desperately needs a new blood supply. So you're sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul, but uh, Peter has a lot of blood vessels, so he'll the radius will never miss it. So, so how successful is this operation for, for this situation? Uh, studies have shown that if there is no blood supply to the bone, uh, and you do uh, a regular bone graft, which means there's no blood supply to that bone graft, uh, it is only successful about 35 to 40%. Whereas if it, you do a surgical procedure where you take the blood vessel and the bone and put it into the avascular scaphoid, the success rate uh, uh, goes uh, somewhere near ninety uh, percent. So, a pretty pretty significant improvement in in terms of the success rate. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about aftercare. In, in all of these procedures, we're trying to get this bone to heal, trying to get the non-union to heal, and in the case where we're we're worried about the avascular necrosis, we're trying to get that bone to revascularize and keep that blood supply uh, going as 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 best we can. So let's talk a little bit about, about the post-op care in terms of what patients should expect after they've had one of these surgeries. How long are they in a cast and how long is it before they begin physical therapy and maybe how long is it before they can go back to using their wrists for normal everyday activities? If uh, 
they need a uh, blood vessel put into the scaphoid. Uh, that is a fairly lengthy procedure. Uh, the uh, fracture is still uh, somewhat delicate. And uh, in my uh, patients, they all go into a cast. Uh, the uh, cast uh, is below the elbow. Uh, they are, it does not include the fingers, but it does include the thumb. Uh, and they are typically in a cast uh, somewhere around six to eight weeks. What I would like to see is that there is evidence that the uh, fracture is starting to heal and the line that you see on an x-ray where, which indicates a fracture is starting to become obliterated uh, before they come out of the cast. Uh, the average amount of time after a vascularized bone graft, or we put a blood vessel into the bone, is somewhere between eight and 12 weeks for it to heal. In physical therapy, when they come out of the cast, does, does everyone work with a physical therapist to regain strength and motion? Uh, the majority of, uh, of uh, people are sent to physical therapy, uh, and the uh, duration of the physical therapy is uh, usually based upon uh, uh, the motivation of the patient. Uh, Well-motivated patients will start doing the physical therapy at home. Uh, pain, most people don't have a lot of pain after this surgery. Uh, and uh, uh, so physical therapy uh, isn't uh, long and extensive usually. Dr. Short, let's talk a little bit about potential complications for these procedures that you've just outlined. What do you worry about as an as a orthopedic hand surgeon uh, when you're taking care of patients in terms of the aftercare? Uh, I worry about whether the blood vessel uh, will continue to supply uh, blood uh, to, this, to this bone. Uh, I worry about uh, the fact that the screw holds the two bones together. Uh, and is stable enough to allow healing. Uh, I worry about, um, especially in, when I uh, put a blood vessel into the bone, uh, 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 things like smoking will, uh, in some cases, uh, decrease the uh, success rate of the surgical procedure. And so you tend to... Um discourage people from smoking or have them stop smoking before you do this procedure? Is that something you, you actually require before doing this procedure? I tell people that if they are smokers, that they should quit. I uh, tell them that uh, the uh, chemicals in the cigarette smoke will constrict the blood vessels and uh, in most likelihood, uh, greatly decrease their chance of uh, successful outcome. Well, then what about the long-term effects? Now, you've mentioned that, that in some cases, especially when you have a condition where you have avascular necrosis and the non-union, that, that that situation never gets back to normal. So what should these people expect years down the road? Are they, are they at higher risk of developing arthritis in the wrist? Are they going to need another operation at some point? Uh, if, uh, studies have been done which have shown that if a person uh, has a scaphoid non-union and chooses not to treat that, uh, five years down the road, approximately 90 to 95 percent of the people have uh, arthritis on x-ray, and about 85 percent of those patients have symptoms from the arthritis, which would include pain, uh, decreased mobility, uh, decreased uh, strength. Well, Dr. Short, if I understand you correctly, it's to the patient's advantage to consider surgery when they have this situation with a scaphoid non-union, and even if they have avascular necrosis or not. I guess one of the questions would be, what's the risk of, of osteoarthritis in that wrist after a successful surgery uh, when the patient has the situation you've described, where they have a non-union and they have a uh, avascular necrosis of the proximal pole, where even though you've, you've completed the surgery, they've healed the fracture, the bone is still not quite normal. Are they still at risk for osteoarthritis down the road? And, and should they expect another operation down the road? Uh, if uh, the 
uh, surgery restores the blood uh, flow and the fracture unites, uh, then they are spared the uh, increased risk of arthritis. Uh, the surgical procedure may uh, decrease their motion slightly, but uh, once you restore the blood flow and have healed the fracture, uh, uh, they, the patient can expect a relatively successful outcome from the surgical procedure. Well, I think that's good news. Um, let's talk a little bit about, again, what, what to expect long term. Do you restrict patients such as this in any of their activities or once they're healed, do you pretty much let them go back to sports, for example? You mentioned football players. Are these patients allowed to go back to contact sports like football? Uh, yes. That's the whole idea of doing the surgical procedure is to uh, allow them to resume the, their normal activities or the sporting activities which uh, they were doing prior to the injury. Once a fracture is healed, the bone uh, in the vast majority of cases is restored to uh, full strength and full function and uh, uh, I anticipate that uh, no further surgery uh, needs to be done. The uh, screw that is placed uh, inside the bone is buried inside the bone so there really is uh, never any need to remove uh, screws or hardware after the surgery. So my expectation if the surgery is successful that they will return to all of the activities they were doing before uh, they got injured. Well, I think this has been a great discussion about scaphoid non-unions, and I think we've, we've covered the terrain pretty comprehensively. Is there anything as we close that you feel like patients need to know um, if they have this injury or if they suspect they may have this injury in terms of, of getting the appropriate care? Uh, uh, my uh, advice uh, to patients uh, is if they have uh, persistent pain after a fall or an injury and they go to the emergency room and the x-rays are normal, uh, just because the x-rays are normal does not necessarily mean that they don't have a fracture. There's multiple cases where uh, the initial x-ray is normal and uh, follow-up x-rays uh, uh, one or two or three weeks later uh, visualizes a fracture that was not seen in the emergency room. Uh, it sometimes takes a while uh, to uh, see the fracture on a plain x-ray. Well, thanks. I think that's good advice. I think people ought to be persistent if they think they've got a problem, especially, and again, as we've discussed earlier in a, in a, in a different lecture, um, you know, there's, there's, there's not m many people that have a simple wrist sprain. When, when wrist pain persists, you and I would probably consider that a, a significant problem, and I think people ought to, to, to be somewhat persistent in trying to get an accurate diagnosis there. So I want to thank you for joining us today, and thank you for this useful information. Thank you.